Hello everyone and welcome to another fly tying session. Uh, my name is Daniel um, and I run a whip shop that's called Nordic Anglers. Today we're going to tie uh, my go-to all-time favorite fly. This is the eel. So it's basically a fairly long, um, fairly big pike fly, but in, in almost exclusive black color, um, which is, is, is my favorite, uh, favorite color for pikes. Um, but today we're going to tie it a bit differently. I've, I've made one or two videos about this fly before, but today we're going to tie it in the, uh, in the swim bait style on the swim bait hook. Uh, the swim bait style on the swim bait hook is, is, uh, is, is something that uh, two very, very well renowned uh, fishermen and, and fly tires, Gunnar Brammer and, and Paul Monaghan, has, uh, has, has made in cahoots with, uh, with Avex. They designed this new swim bait hook. And, and I must say, I really uh, like this style of, of tying and I like this hook. It's, it's a fairly big hook. Um, and, and the idea is that this will always have the point of the hook, uh, the hook tip uh, facing upwards so you can, you can retrieve it really slow you can retrieve it without getting tangled with with roots and and other stuff uh, on on the bottom so um and and slow retrieve for me is is one of uh, one of the best ways to fish for pike so today we're converting the eel into a swim bait style pattern here goes <laughs> Now we're ready to tie the eel um, in this uh, in this swim bait style. Um, the first thing we need is of course a hook, and and for this I use of course the Arix uh, swim bait uh, hook. Uh, it's the Arix PR three hundred and eighty seven, um, um, and uh, and the one we use today is the size six. Um, the swim bait um, way of tying here is, is is awesome because, as I said, it would it would um, it allows you to uh, to have a, a fly that you can really drag slowly almost across the bottom without getting snags, due to the uh, to the way that this fly is is, is designed and uh, and that is um, that is um, due to the design of the hook here. But the first thing we need is is to attach a rattle. Um, and in order to do that properly, I saw uh, saw a great tip from uh, from Gunnar Brammer. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, I urge you to uh, to to swing by and, and check him out. Uh, he's he's really cool regarding all, especially regarding all these uh, these these big flies for muskie and pike. Um, and he just took a a small piece of uh, of monofilament uh, line in a, this is zero point seventy, I think. And then he basically ties one on each side of the uh, of the hook shank here, because this will give a broader uh, a broader hook shank, um, and this will make it a lot easier to attach the uh, the round rattle. So there we go. Just attaching a small, you know, maybe just five or six millimeters. Of the uh, of this uh, of this mono uh, on each side of the hook to have a, f a good place for the uh, for the actual uh, rattle to latch onto. So as you can see now the the hook the uh, the shank here is more than doubled in size. This makes it a lot easier to attach a rattle. So there we are, ready to just just pile up some tying thread on top of the rattle and it will it will stay there uh, quite a lot more yes, it will be quite a lot more sturdy and to make it even more sturdy I, I turned the tying thread here underneath to pull uh, down on the um, on the uh, on the piece of the uh, the, th the the portion of the rattle where I have uh, tying thread around because this will narrow uh, and and just really tighten the uh, the the turns of tying thread on the rattle. This will also give the fly almost a, uh, an even more pronounced effect, uh, keel effect, when you have the weight uh, on the, on the bottom here. So so this will further ensure that your fly always stays upright, uh, always is fishing with the hook upside. 
um, which is uh, which is of course great if, if you do not want to snag and you want to fish this really really deep and uh, and then the, then it's just a matter of adding a bit of sabagap <laughs> this is a very old bottle so the sabagap here is is a bit gooey but to really ensure that um, the rattle is going to stay there indefinitely then uh, then the uh, then the sabagap is, is a good idea then i move the tank for it up here because this is the the part of the hook that we're actually going to use for tying the rest of the fly so i'm just going to move the tying thread up there and then i'm going to take a nice long piece uh, bundle of bucktail in black the bucktail here is, is going to be kind of the core of the fly and then that is going to be the part that is going to support all the rest of the materials so I take the black bucktail in as long as I can possibly find a uh, bucktail can be a bit tricky and a bit hard to uh, to get in a decent quality but um, but I try to do my best and and if you order bucktail from me and you just write in the commentary that that you need uh, s some specifics regarding the bucktail that you order then we will do our very best to uh, to to find the most suited bucktail for you so if, if you write you want the longest possible then we will we will ship you the longest possible of course if you don't write anything we'll just pick the the one from the top of the pile but but since there is a, a quite a good quality check on on these things, then uh, then even the just the random top of the pile is is going to be uh, is going to be fairly good as well. But of course, if you really really are adamant about uh, to have the absolute link longest, then write that in the in the commentary to the order, and we will send you the longest we have. Of all of that and as you can see the bucktail here it just kind of kind of stretches out not stretches out but 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 fans out uh, and this will this will give a bit broader profile but as soon as you pull push, pull the fly this will this will collapse a bit but it's it's nice to have this to support the rest of the materials that we're gonna we're gonna add to the fly one of the things that I like the best to have in these flies is uh, is ostrich, and uh, and I have some fairly long ostrich in the shop in in some selected colors. Again, this is one of the materials that are pretty hard to come by and pretty scarce. So um, I have some as often as is humanly possible, but it's not it's not all the time it's possible to actually get your hands on some of this. So if you see uh, the colors that you need in in, uh, in this long uh, ostrich, then I I would I would recommend that you buy it because um, I cannot guarantee how long stocks will last and so on. Move my tank thread a bit further up, but you can you can really see this is just such an awesome material, so so alive in the water. It's nice and long. It's also fairly fairly durable, much more durable than than what I would have expected uh, when first I started tying with the, with this, because I thought that the pike's teeth would just chew it up like you know, and, and it would just it was just uh, would just disappear. But but that's not the case. This is actually quite durable. Then I'm gonna add a bit of flesh, and uh, and here I have the uh, holographic uh, flesher boom magnum. Um, which is for for predator flies and for 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 pike flies and musky flies. This is by far uh, this is without a doubt the most uh, the most usable and and best product you can get your hands on. The uh, and the colors are just phenomenal. So um, so the uh, the flesh abu uh, magnum in in holographic is is really really one of those materials that I have just enjoy using every single time so I add some flesh here and the great thing about this even though you're not you probably won't be tying a fly that's 52 centimeters long what I do here is is I, I, I took out a sparser bundle um, and then I can I can double it um, and this will give me a nice tapering effect on the fly because the first the, the ones uh, the, I, I don't I don't tie it just in the middle 
So now I have a longer portion of the fly that is uh, of the flesh here that is slightly longer than the longest of the uh, of the ostrich, and and then I'm gonna double this over, and and because I have more than more than half the length before, now it's it's gonna it's gonna taper the uh, the end of the tail of the fly here as well. There we go. And then just for a good measure, I'm going to add a bit of the uh, Bold Faithful Big Fly Fiber, my all-time favorite materials for pike flies. Not a, not a lot, but, but uh, the curly part here will give a bit of bulk, and, the, uh, and the, the long straight fibers will also add some, uh, some, some movement to, uh, to the rest of the fly. And that's what this fly is all about. It's all about movement. It's all about adding the right components in the right places to, to give, it, give it that unique uh, walk in the water. The unique movement in the water. I don't know if it's called walk in the water. Is, it, is, is that something you could say, Stephen? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, but I did. So, there it is. Me wrecking the English language by adding random Danish phrases. <laughs> I think it's called Spanglish, right? No, no, that's the English part. Dang What's it called? If, if you Danglish, yeah, Danglish. That's right, Danglish. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice word. Maybe we should use that in another outfit. That was a reference to another thing that you. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. So, oh. I just realized the other day that uh, my my probably my catchphrase for 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 these flight signing videos would be so. So I'm I'm trying to dial that down, but it would it would really be fun if someone could count how many times I say it in in a flight signing video like this. So if 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 you watch it anyway, you know, and 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 you take note of that. Um, uh, it would be a good, a great help for to uh, to me to actually know how often I say that because uh, I want to dial that down uh, down down a bit. I think. What do you think, Stefan? I think it's a good idea to dial it down a little bit. Yeah, um, it became really obvious to me when uh, when I was uh, watching through some of the uh, some of the uh, V blocks from the water, where every single time I was. I was, you know, I had turned on the camera and was filming myself. I started out with so, and, so, and you know, when the, when when there is four or five or six small clips of, of maybe thirty uh, seconds of, of me talking about uh, you know any a particular spot or, or whatever, and I start out uh, with that, then it becomes just l let's say it it becomes less than optimal. <clears throat> For this next part, we need to add some uh, some hackles, some uh, some saddle feathers um, in black, and and these are going to be kind of like you know kind of covering and and going to be a bit longer than the rest of the fly because this is basically a, a very long black fly. Then I'm going to add these so that the 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 hackles here, the, the saddle feathers here, are the longest uh, in the fly. And again, uh, quantities of of of, of Saddles are are limited, so uh, so I think you should you should probably if I th I think I'm pretty sure I have some black in stock, but I don't know for how long. So um, so if and and the color black is is really really one of the the wi most widely used. So 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 get some while while stocks last. And uh, before we add the hackles, I'm sorry, we're gonna add some um, some lateral scale in in the color opal. Gonna add these to each side, just just two on each side here. There we go, two on the other. This this will be kind of like a, a, a lateral. The the lateral is that called, what is that called in English, Stefan? Lateral. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the sideline. It's not the sideline in English. But it is just the it, it's it, it's the line that the fish have that is a sensory apparatus that can that can detect movement in the water. Um, so I, I I don't I don't recall the exact English words, but it's something that uh, most fish has 
basically all along the uh, side of the fish they have these very very small holes into their ner nervous system that that detects it uh, detects movement in the water then i'm gonna add these awesome awesome it's just called the lateral line it's just called the lateral line okay so not the sideline I don't know what it is today with with all this just inventing new English words but uh, just four or five of these uh, these feathers here I think I have six here but that's okay as well so gradually the fly speed the fly becomes long this is gonna be quite a long one maybe a bit too uh, it can't be too big it can't be too big, not for the pike that I catch. I mean, this is a fly for the big ones. Of course, the smaller ones will try to grab it as well. But but in in my experience tells me that that if you're fishing relatively unfished waters, um, then the bigger the fly, the bigger the fish. It it's 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 really basically that simple. Um, and and a big fly like this, even though it's very long, as soon as the the, the pike opens its its big big mouth. It creates such a uh, such a vacuum that it will because this fly is basically you know it's it's just built of a little bucktail and some feathers and stuff. It will it will suck the entire fly in. So so even even though this fly looks really long, the way that pike will 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 suck it in suck the fly in by by using the vacuum from opening their mouth, this will just get in there as well. So it's not like it's it's not like this is uh, you know a. 30 centimeter uh, 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 wooden or, 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 or a soft bait that can be a bit more difficult for the pike to actually get all the way into the mouth. This is, this is a lot easier for the pike to, to, uh, to inhale. I I've seen you catch fairly small pike on these huge flies. Yeah. So it doesn't really... Yeah, Stephen knows. Oh. Now it's off to the uh, off to the finishing part. I'm gonna take another bundle of the uh, of the ostrich here, and because yeah, the ostrich is, is the first one to tie down. Because I'm gonna tie this uh, uh, so it's so it's 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 pointing forward, and then I'm gonna reverse it with a with a fish mask. Then uh, then I need to just be sure that I, I tie this in the in the right order. So we add all of the ostrich and because we want the fish masks the fish mask to be uh, to be filled out so there's no uh, no air pockets in there I'm just gonna leave all of this there then I'm gonna take a bundle of bucktail Again, make sure that you cut this all the way down to the actual pelt, the actual leather. Again, I remove some of the re the really short ones, and apparently also some of the long ones. You could stack this actually. No, I'm not going to do that. Then I carefully try to manipulate this so it's gonna go close to all the way around the hook. So gently, gently just pushing and folding and pushing and folding. And then I make a couple of turns with the tying thread, loose ones, before I apply pressure. The, the tying thread I'm using here is a, is a 100 Dinya uh, GSP. There we go. Gonna leave this here because that is again. It's gonna make sure that my uh, my fish mask is is not gonna be filled up with with air bubbles. And this fly is fairly heavy. The hook here is fairly heavy, and we added the rattle, which also gives it a lot of weight. Um, and and that should be sufficient uh, because the rest of the fly here is is built as it is. This will give it kind of like a a, a very nice hovering effect in the water. 
So when you, when you stop retrieving, uh, the fly will, will, it will sink, but it will sink slowly. And a lot of the times, um, the pike will, will strike the fly as the fly is, is basically just, just hovering there. I'm gonna fold everything back. So we get the the eye out in the open. I'm gonna take a fish mask. You can, of course, if if you like uh, if you like UV glue, you can you can do that instead. But I I just. I just find that these fish masks are really, really awesome. They are uh, very easy to use. They look great on the fly, and um, and uh, and they fish really well. So basically, there we have it. I'm gonna hold everything in place. All right, I just need my saber gap, and then I just smear a lot of this on to the uh, to the f front maybe five millimeters or so to make sure that my fish mask will stay in place and is is nice and tightly secured and the uh, the ostrich uh, feathers here will will soak up a lot of this that's also why it's a bit difficult to actually make this with uh, with uv glue and uh, because to to get a get a good head on this you would you would have to apply just a ton of, of UV glue, and it would be difficult to get actually inside the uh, actually inside the, uh, the the materials here. So there we have a long, slender profile really really well moving fly with the lateral lines um, oh we need the eyes of course um, and you know any any color goes well with the, with the black but but I really like the uh, I really like the opal color for for this for this fly so I'm going to add two of those I just had them here and of course the size of the fish skull refers to the size of the eyes so the size of the fish skull is um, is the size of the eyes that will fit into the groove the, the dentation that that they have made on on each side of the head here there we go the swim bait eel <laughs> And guess what a coincidence, I just needed a few of these for my box, so oh, oh, that was that was a really, really nice coincidence that it just happened to be that I had uh, had time to make a video with the flies that I needed for the, my next pike trip. <laughs> Here it is, the finished uh, swim bait eel. Um, as always, you can find uh, the material kit for this fly and all the other flies on, on this YouTube and uh, a ton of just, just, we have just an outrageous amount of fly fishing equipment. We're an exclusive fly fishing store um, and, uh, and you can, as I said, find all the materials there. It's called Nordic Anglers. Um, it's, it's my web shop. Um, we ship worldwide, um, so, so please, please swing by and, uh, and check out our big selection. Um, another thing is it would mean very much to us if you would uh, if you would please subscribe to the channel um, and um, well i think that's it for now um, all there's left to say is i wish you all the best of luck out on the water remember to bring some eels if you're going pike fishing